So really, it's quite the project before you create a database to design this out on a sheet of paper, how you're going to break down into your smallest, most meaningful parts, your tables, and then be able to say your, what table is going to link to what table. So you can have all your data eventually link to each other, either directly or indirectly, meaning that I can link my computers to my employees, my employees to the departments, the manufacturer to the computers. So it's not in linear, straight line linkage, the manufacturers go through the computers and the computers are related to the employees and the employees is related to the department. So even if the line of the relationship bounces around, as long as they eventually all link up, that's all that matters here. That way we can pull up any information, a collection of information, like I could get the manufacturer's ID, the employee that it's assigned to, in what department they're in, and the computer, if it's a laptop or desktop, if I actually have that field in there, defining if they have a laptop or desktop. So now we're ready. Once we have these fields set up, they're not linked yet. Just because we have them set up, we need to go through an extra step to actually say, look, you are the foreign key field that matches the primary key in another table, its data type, and we want to link you up. This special place we're going to go to, first I'm going to go ahead and right click on these tabs and close out of all of the tables, is up here on the database tools tab called the relationships. When I click on that, it opens up what I call a dance floor. This is where introductions are made. Have you ever been introduced to somebody and you've got something in common? You're just drawn towards them? Well, we already create that up. We planted the seeds in these tables, those fields. All we have to do now is introduce them, hook them up. So to put them on our dance floor, as it were, in this open space here, is we need to show all our tables. By default, it's not going to show any tables. You can bring up these tables or these friends and introduce them one of two ways. You can either right-click in a blank area, go to Show Table, or come up here on the contextual related tab to the relationships, go to the relationship group and click on show table as well. Close out, right click, left click show table, brings up the same thing. Okay. Now when it comes to showing the table, you can also show the queries, but we're not going to worry about that or both. We just want the tables. We want to bring all the tables together so we can link them all up, hook them up as it were. You can do this one of two ways. You can double click to bring up the table. Let me click and drag the screen down. Double click on the departments table. Double click again. You want to be careful because if you double click again, notice the name of these tables, department tables, department tables one. We don't want to do that because it's just going to mess up the relationships. This is a phony table here. So what we want to do is add the rest of our tables. In fact, you can click and select the first table, hold down the shift key, click on the last table, select them all and click add. It adds them all. When you close out, get rid of the phony ones, the ones that have numbers next to them after the table's name. You can do it one of two ways. You can either right click on it and left click on hide table or you can just click on it. I mean, I already have the departments. This is departments one. Just click on it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. It doesn't really delete the table. It hides it. I mean, the table's still over here. Let me click on the computers, hit the delete key, and we've got the four here. So click and drag and move them around here so we've got them lined up. And when your tables come up and they don't look right, like let's say, for example, they look shrunken here, you can hover over the corner edge of the table here until your pointer turns into a two-way arrow, and then you can just click and drag your left mouse button down and stretch it open so you can see all the fields. So here on the dance floor, we have everybody, all the tables. We need to introduce them to the person that they're compatible with, that we actually set this up when we created our tables. Remember, in the computer's table, we have the manufacturer ID, so it can relate to the manufacturer ID primary key in the primary manufacturer table. We can also link the employee ID. We can tie the computers to each employee by creating the employee ID field that has the same data type as the primary table employees with the primary key employee ID. So to link these up, it's really simple here. And you can move these tables around. It doesn't matter if it makes it easier for you to click and drag because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be clicking the primary key and dragging it over to the foreign key field to create a link. So employee ID, let me click and select employee ID in the employees table, the primary key. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag with my left mouse button down. As I'm dragging and going over to the next table, you see it's got that little circle with a line through it. It says, look, you can't create a relationship in the middle of the dance floor. You actually have to go over and dump it right on that foreign key field and let go. Now you can see it brings up a little window. It says, look, here's the relationship that you're creating. You both have the same thing in common. You have an employee ID in the employees table, and you have the employee ID, the foreign key, in the computers table. They don't have to be the same name. But to keep it simple and easy to relate to, I mean, I don't want to come down here and say this is the employee ID. And even though it has the same data type as that employee ID, I don't want to call, rename this and call it EMID. It can still relate. It's harder to conceptually see that and go, oh, here we go, employee ID to employee ID, if that makes sense. Okay. So once we click and drag, it pops open this window. It says, what type of relationship do you want to create with this person? 
or linked to with this foreign key field here in the other table. Checking the box enforcing the referential integrity. That means that you cannot delete or update any records in one table because it will affect the relationship of the records in the other table. So the employee ID, let's say I have employee Bob Jones. He's employee ID number five. Let's say I go ahead and I enforce this, okay? Later on, a couple months from now, I, I want to be able to delete the employee five. If I try to delete him, I'll say, no, you can't do that because it's related to the computer he's tied to in another table. Well, that's very helpful because if I delete the employee five and I go, oh, that's right, he's got a computer I got to keep track of. I can assign it to somebody else. That prevents that deletion or and it prevents even an update. If I rename the employee, it says, forget it. So this is a, like a little police guy. He runs around and says, no, you can't update, you can't delete, you can't mess with these records because now we have a relationship. You can't break the bond. And it, it works also in reverse. If I tried to delete the employee ID assigned to a computer, so let's say I have computer asset tag or barcode number 5613-7 or something like that. If I delete it, it'll say forget it because we're tied to this employee ID. This employee is still employed with us. Or it doesn't even know that it's still employed with us. It's just saying you can't delete it or update it. So there are some purposes, although be it few, to just enforce referential integrity because with databases, things are constantly updating, aren't they? So the other thing you can do is you can select these two boxes down below, cascades to update or delete records. By checking these boxes, if you delete one record in one table that's related to another, it deletes the corresponding records in that table. For example, employees. I got employee five. Again, Bob Dole. He's employee five. Now that I have these boxes checked, if I delete Bob Dole, which by checking this delete related records, when I delete Bob Dole, it's going to come over here in the computer table because it's related with the employee ID, and it's going to delete that computer that's assigned to his name. That's not really helpful because if I delete that computer, it's gone from my database, and I realize that in my inventory, I need to buy another computer. Well, the computer didn't quit and leave the company. It was the employee, right? So keeping this in mind, before you start deleting employees, how they're related and what they're related to, and we'll go into that a little bit more in depth. The whole purpose of this is to actually link them up so we can actually view all the employees that are assigned to what computers and which computers are assigned to what employees. So we create the relationship. Go ahead and click on Create. It creates a link. This line here, first it means they're linked. In fact, you can see that the line comes from the employee ID up here and lands at the last field here, the employee ID here. So again, here's the primary key and here's the foreign field or the foreign key that's related to a field in another table that's assigned a primary key. The primary key cannot have any duplicates. It can only have one record, right? So we can only have one employee ID that's unique. So we can have 20 Bob Doles, but each Bob Dole has to have a unique employee ID or social security number, okay? So there's only going to be one record related into this table versus related to many records in this table. Well, how can you have many employee IDs in this table? Well, what if I have an employee, Bob Dole, number five, who has a computer, desktop, and also has a laptop? He would have two different asset tag numbers or barcode numbers, but yet he would have his name in there twice because we need to keep track of his laptop and we need to keep track of his desktop. So there can be duplicates. So you can have one to many relationship where you have one employee who has many computers. Now, for some reason, you made a mistake, at least at this point, before you enter in any records and so on. You can edit the relationship by right-clicking on that little line there and left-clicking on Edit Relationship, and then you can uncheck or check the boxes or, you know, uncheck them completely and then click OK. It still has a relationship, but it's no longer enforced. It's just linked up, which, again, we don't want to mess with that. We want to go ahead and right-click, edit the relationship, and check all the boxes and go ahead and click OK. I mean you can right click and delete the relationship in which case it gives you a warning it says are you sure you want to permanently delete this? If you say yes then you're back to square one. You gotta click and drag and pop that screen open, check the boxes to enforce it, to make sure that they're allowed to update any fields. So if I update Bob Dole's name to uh, Bobby Dole, it actually will allow you to do that when I check this box here, update and also delete records if we need to delete them and click create. Okay, let's create a few more. So I'm looking in the employees table and I've got a foreign key department code. So that's got to go to the departments table. So I'm going to go ahead and I can click and drag the table down here and then click and drag the primary key over and dump it right on to the department code. Check the corresponding boxes so I can make changes to it and click create. There we go again. Now it's one to many. I can only have one department code number in this table. It can never be duplicated. So 100 is always going to be HR department. Now departments to employees Notice how it's one to many. I can have many employees in the same department, can I? 
I can have Bob, I can have Susie, I can have Sherry. So I can have all of them in the HR department. So this code is going to be duplicated many times, you know, by different employees. So that's, again, a one-to-many relationship. Now, does it matter that I click and drag the primary key to the foreign key field? No, it doesn't. However, the one thing you want to keep in mind is that you can have a one-to-one -one relationship, meaning that if I want to link a primary key to another primary key, now I don't have any tables in here that I would consider linking primary key to primary key. But if I did, remember each primary key is unique. You can't have duplicates, so that's always going to be a one. And I link it to another primary key, it's also going to be a one. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. That's the only time that I would say that it's really important you know which table you're clicking and dragging from. It's important because in a one-to-one -one relationship, you want to find out who the initiator is. In other words, when you create a one-to-one -one relationship, it's important to remember the first table or the initiator of the relationship that you drag from. Now, after you create a relationship that's one-to-one, -one, it's important to remember the first table you dragged it from or the initiator. So let's pretend this we're going to drag from this table to that table and link up the two primary keys where it's one-to-one -one relationship. I can only have one code in here and only one manufacturer ID doesn't make sense to link them up at all because the data types may be the same but the numbers are different. I have my 100 codes in here and over here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think it's numbered that way. So if I did create a relationship, a one-to-one, -one, I just want you to know you need to remember which table you dragged it from. So again, if I dragged it from this table to that table, this is the initiator. This one we would call the stronger of the two in the relationship. What I mean by that is that when it comes to deleting records, I can't delete it from the stronger one first. I have to go through the weaker one, the weaker table. So if I'm in the manufacturer's table, you know, well, over here in the manufacturer's table, and I'm like, oh, okay, I need to delete a manufacturer and I delete it, it'll actually allow me to do so. But if I go to the initiator of this relationship in the department codes and I try to, to delete a record in there, it's going to say forget it, you can't. I could do it the other way. I can click and drag it from that way, in which case this table is going to be the initiator, the strong one. Other than that, if it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, just click and drag however you'd like. So for example, let's do another one here. Manufacturer ID. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag that to the primary key in the manufacturer's table and let go. Check the boxes and click create. It's still going to be one record here to many over here. You also want to notice that this line is thicker than the other. If I click on another line, it thickens up, right? I can come up here on the design tab to the tools group and also click edit relationships versus, let me cancel out of that, right clicking on that teeny tiny little line and left clicking on edit right there. Click cancel. Just make sure that when you click on it, it's bold before you go ahead and edit your relationship, otherwise you, you might be editing for something else. There may be times when you may not want to enforce referential integrity, and let me give you an example here. The best example I can think of is, let's say we got a computers table, we got it here, and over here we've got notes. Maybe we have notes for each computer. Well, that's the operative word, maybe. Like some computers, we want to write down or put in notes that it was scratched or dinged or we got a refurbished computer. Sometimes we may not have those notes. When it gets questionable, when you're linking up one field to another field in a related database, and those fields could at any one time be blanks, you don't want to enforce referential integrity. You want to be able to go ahead and right-click. click First click on the uh, relationship and right-click and edit the relationship and uncheck Enforce and click OK. This way, it doesn't require that it actually match up with the corresponding field in another table because some of those fields um, or records will be blank. But at least this way, we're still linked. So we can still, because of the linkage, be able to pull up information from both tables where the tables do have some data. Or even if they don't, they'll pull up and show us blanks as well. Now, the definition of normalizing is, again, taking your data and breaking it down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, in which we call tables. The opposite of that is denormalization. It's not putting a field that may contain occasional blanks or empty data into a table of its own. So in my computers table, if I go ahead and I have a notes field down here, sometimes it's blank, sometimes it isn't, that's denormalization. If I want to break it down because it occasionally has blanks, then I'll probably put it in its own table here. Another example, let's say we have a client's table here and we're leaving a website address field in the client's table blank. Instead of creating its own solitary table, calling it maybe the client website addresses and linking it to the client's table. Because again, not all clients may have websites, you'll end up with some blanks sooner or later. So some experts will say it's better to normalize the field into its own table, but really it's not a set rule. So that's really up to you if you want to have blanks within the table of notes or create a separate table that allows occasional blanks. If that's the case, go ahead and link them up. 
but don't enforce it between those two fields there. And that one that you're linking it up to obviously isn't going to have a primary key because remember, a primary key can't have any blanks. So that's where you won't assign the notes table or the website table a primary key. You'll just have websites table, you have the websites, and then you'll just go ahead and create a, a generic relationship and not enforced. Now, once we create the relationships, we can go ahead and click and drag and move these tables around. And you can imagine if you get quite a few tables in here, you want to organize so you can keep track of it at any one time if you're running into issues or you want to find out the problems in between your databases here. Or you want to find out which records you can delete first when you're setting up your forms, especially if it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Well, let me first go ahead and right-click and edit this relationship, and let's go back to Enforce and make sure we can update and delete the related records and click OK. And like you say, you can imagine if you've got a lot of tables here, I try to organize them instead of you know having them like this and going, well, what goes where and which is my main table here or what are the links? You want to click and, and drag them and move them around. And the reason why I say that is because it's very helpful later on when you're creating forms or maybe queries and so forth, because you can always refer to this relationship table later. In fact, you can even print this out if you want to go back to the design board here and be able to say, I'm creating additional tables. Now, how am I going to link these up? You know, go ahead and draw on the piece of paper where here I can't draw or write in any ideas. Come up here in the design tab to the tools group and click on the relationship report. Automatically generates report where you can print this off. Just click on the print button. It'll print it off for you. Then when you're finished, you can go ahead and close out. It's going to ask you, do you want to save the report? I'm going to say no. Finally, when I'm done with my relationships, I want to click on the save button. Anytime I click and drag to create a relationship, it's automatically saved. As far as the layout goes, if I start moving these around, that's another type of save. So when I close out of here, it's going to say, do you want to save the layout? Do you like your layout here? Remember, the moment we click and drag and we create a relationship, it's automatically saving that relationship between the two, so we don't have to click Save. It's asking us about the layout. So if I go ahead and click Yes, come back up here to the Database Tools, click on Relationships, it remembers the way I had it laid out here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.